for who you've done. Worship with us tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for those that are getting a breakthrough, but I feel like everybody needs this tonight. I wonder if you could just right where you are, shut everyone else out around you and make your praise personal with God. I feel like he wants to encourage somebody. Hallelujah. As you worship the Lord, you step into his presence. Just you and the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Now stretch your hand out and begin to pray with somebody next to you. If there's someone nearby, God wants to use you. Hallelujah. You never know. Somebody just needs prayer. them receive what they need right now. Oh, touch my brother. Touch my sister. Encourage them right now. Encourage. speaks to and you step across the aisle find somebody else and help them pray right now let's take a few moments and encourage one another that's it the devil is a lie you're gonna make it coming let's exhort one another right now let the Lord use you let God work through you right now Give him the anxiety, the worry, the fear. Cast it all on him. Lord, I give it to you, Jesus.
Somebody just needs the peace of God. You need that confidence to know he's going to be there. He's going to make a way. If you need the peace of God, stretch your hands out right now. I just feel a lingering of the Holy Ghost in this presence. imagine the feeling we'll have when we get to heaven knowing that all of our worries and our troubles are behind us no more fear no more death no more sickness won't it be wonderful it's gonna be amazing amen this song says that whenever I feel your presence it's it's just like that it's a taste of what heaven is gonna be all about amen when you can come into his presence and, and cast all of your care, your worry, and your trouble on him and just enjoy his sweet presence. Amen. I, I, I feel like God is ministering to somebody in this place right now. I wonder if one more time, this time without the support of music, just lift your hands to the Lord right where you are. Hallelujah. Just begin to love him right now. Father, we love you. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing. That's it. Just yield his presence right now. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. thankful for the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 
Father, we love you. Thank you for that beautiful name, the saving name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. God is so good. Why don't you turn around to somebody beside you and tell them there's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Power over whatever kingdom is coming against you, whatever problem may afflict you. No matter what spirits may torment you, there is power in the name of Jesus. Everything is temporary except the name of Jesus stands forever. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Can we give the name of Jesus another round of applause? Amen. There is no other name. Amen. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. It's good to be in the house of God tonight. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to transition. We're not going to stop worshiping the Lord, but we're going to worship the Lord in the giving of our tithe and our offering tonight. So if you're going to be giving by way of cash or check and you need a contribution envelope, our ushers are here. They're going to be walking through the aisles and you just have to raise your hand and, and they'll give one of those to you. And that, that's if you're going to be giving by way of cash or check. If not, there are other ways that you can give, and you, you can see that on the screen behind me. Amen. So while you get your offering ready, we're going to go ahead and go over some announcements today. Amen. We have a youth retreat coming up. Or is Elevate in the house tonight? I said, is Elevate in the house? Elevate Student Ministries. Amen. This is a youth retreat, and this is in October the 7th through the 9th. And this is at Camp Choye. This is a $150 per student deposit. A deposit of $25 is due by September the 15th, okay? September 15th, the deposit of $25, Elevate, say yeah. I heard two or three, amen. The remainder must be paid October the 1st, okay? The remainder has to be paid October the 1st. This can be paid however you pay your tithe or your offering, but put student's name and in quotations, we put youth retreat, okay? It must be noted. So you can give that however you give your tithing and your offering. Again, $25 by September the 15th, and the, the remainder has to be paid by October the 1st. All right. We have Missions Ministry, and they are having a cheesecake bake sale. I don't know about you, but I love me some cheesecake. Amen. Thank you to all, all of you who purchased cheesecakes for Missions. We sold out. Praise God. I was making my way down there to go get a cheesecake because I seen these people holding this beautiful thing in their hand today, and I was told that they had sold it, they had sold out. So I was pretty sad about that. But 
Praise God. Amen. That's awesome that it, they sold out. Thank you for purchasing that. Uh, we also have a ladies' retreat coming up. That is October the 21st and the 22nd. And it's, this is also at Camp Choye. Uh, a deposit of $50 is due by September the 15th, the same day as a youth retreat. A uh, $50 deposit is due. You can pay exactly like I just said, your deposit, the same way you pay your tithing or your offering. Just make sure you name the ladies' retreat in the note there, however you pay it. All right. Also, we have a special announcement. I'm going to ask Brother Salinas if he can come up. We have an announcement on Bible studies today. Amen. Let's give a round of applause for Brother Salinas and a new Bible study ministry. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. This morning, I'd like to just... Uh, this evening, sorry, just like to take the opportunity to thank God and our pastor and his lovely wife and ministry leadership for the opportunity that is given to my wife and I to lead the ministry of Bible studies. And in Matthew 28, 19, it says, Go ye therefore and teach the nations. Another version says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Our greatest teacher or as the Lord Jesus Christ did not complete that task he began on this earth. And in our hands was left that responsibility of continuing Christ's mission on this earth. You and I, brothers and sisters, have that entrusted with that blessed obligation of teaching everyone the apostolic oneness truth of Jesus Christ. And because of that, without a solid scripture, foundation the bible tells us that for my people will perish of the lack of knowledge therefore the pentecostals of katie will begin bible study starting this tuesday coming and uh starting at 7 p.m here located at our church today a group of us already has started calling back a lot of the folks that had already signed up for bible studies and we have a good amount of handful of already coming ready to be starting already for Tuesday. And for those also that are interested in teaching, you guys can see us out in the foyer after service. You can visit, uh, speak to my wife or my person for those that are interested in teaching Bible study. You guys have a blessed night. Praise the Lord. Let's give a round of applause. Amen. Tuesday night's Bible study. Amen. And like he said, if you have any questions, just see them at the booth his wife, or himself. Amen. Praise God. Those are the announcements tonight. Why don't we stand to our feet and let's get our offering. Let's hold it up and let's pray over it. Lord, we thank you, God, tonight, Lord, for providing. We thank you because you are the Jehovah Jireh, Lord. You provide for us, God. And we thank you, Lord, for the gift tonight. We thank you for the giver, Lord. And we ask that you bless both, God. In Jesus' name, we give this for your honor and for your glory. We praise you tonight. Why don't we pass forward and deposit our offering. God bless you.
of your children so i know you won't let me down no i'm not worried about a thing really i'm not worried about a thing because you take care of your children you always take care of your children season God you don't break your promises to me Lord you have never lied you have never lied to me if you said you would fight then I knew you would fight for me this is my confidence you don't break promises you have never lied if you said you would fight, if you said you would fight, then I know you will. I know you will fight for me. This is my confidence. You don't break promises. How many of you know that the promises of God are yes and amen? He does not break his promises to his children. But the promises of God come with an if attached. So if you're in covenant, with God, that means all the promises that he made apply to your life without exception. That means everything in your life that happens to you is one of two things. It either means that you're not in covenant and God loves you enough to try to get your attention to get back into covenant, or it means that he's trying to teach you something. Either way, everything that happens in your life is God saying, I love you. That means every storm, every trial that comes your way, you can rejoice in the middle of it. You are not forgotten. I said it last time, but we say a little word when we sing this song. And I just feel like we need to do it again because we're doing the same thing where I see some people singing, I'm not worried about a thing. And then you're gonna go back to being real, real worried about everything. Am I wrong? No. So we're gonna sing the chorus again. And this time we're gonna say, I'm not worried about a thing. Really? Let's practice, let's practice. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about a thing. I'm not worried about a thing because we sing it, you need to say it with an authority to convince yourself, to convince the devil, to convince everyone that's waiting for you to give up on God, everyone that's waiting for you to curse the church. Your praise is your testimony. I'm not worried about a thing.
somebody make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. His word commands us, cast your cares on him, for he careth continually. He careth for you. Cast your cares on him because he cares for you. Man, I love that song. I love the spirit I feel in this place. You know, this thing is on a hot simmer right now, and if, if we're not careful, this thing's just going to blow up here in the next few minutes, and I'm all for it. Amen? I want the Lord to have his way here tonight. Amen. Turn to somebody near you, smile at them, and say, I'm glad to be sitting so next to somebody as good-looking as you are. We'll have a time of repentance here at the end. Uh, you got that, huh? Yeah. We are so happy that each and every one of you are here this evening, and we want to take this time to welcome our guests. Why don't we take time right now to welcome our online audience, those listening via Revival Radio, watching over the internet, Facebook, YouTube. Come on, Pentecostals. We're glad you're with us tonight. We pray this service blesses you. Amen. Well, we have several first, second, and special guests, but before we get to them, if it's your first or second time to be with us here at the Pentecostals, you should have received a card or filled out a form on the iPad on the way in. So if it's your first or second time and you didn't fill out a card, lift your hand. The ushers are coming down the aisle at this time. First time or second time and you didn't fill out over there on the left. Thank you, brother. All right. Anyone else? Keep your hand up just a moment longer. First or second time and you didn't fill out a card. All right. Looks like we have just about everyone covered. And I am wondering, Pentecostals, are you ready to help me welcome our guests this evening? I know it's Labor Day, but everybody's off work tomorrow. You're off school tomorrow. So let's just, for the next however long this service lasts, give it everything we've got. All right, are you going to help me welcome our guests this evening? There we go. All right. So when I call your name, we don't want to embarrass you, but we do want to welcome you and acknowledge you. If I call your name or something that sounds like your name, just lift your hand so we can see where you're seated and we can welcome you. First time guest, Danielle, or Daniel, I'm not sure. Devorah, where are you at? Devorah. Over here on the left, Daniel. God bless you. We're glad you're here this evening. First time guest, Dorlian Donaldson. Dorlian, we're sitting by... Right here in the middle. God bless you. We're glad you're here this evening. All right. The Sorter family, Wanda, Patience, and Carrie, over here on the left. God bless you. We're glad you're here this evening. No stranger to our church, special guest, Brandon Krosky. There he is right there. Good looking fella in the orange yellow shirt. friend of our church, one of the instructors at TBC, Cynthia Tika. Cynthia, wave your hand right there in the center section. God bless you. We're glad you're here. Also, my grandson, Everett Chapa, is here, and he brought his parents with him right there. There he is. All right. Amen. It's a great spirit we feel in this place. Let's stand together. We're going to put five minutes on the clock. You can make your way around, shake everyone's hand, tell them you're glad to see them. You see somebody you don't know, introduce yourself. God bless you.
You took away the fear in us Now we praise you cause you can deliver us a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. It's more than just an adjective. It means it has personal application. That means that whatever I'm facing right now, God is so much greater than. Amen. He is greater than depression, than cancer, than headaches, than financial problems. No matter what I go through, our God is greater. Our God is greater. You may be seated just for a moment. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. To all of our guests that are with us this evening, if I haven't met you yet, my name is Rob McKee, and I'm the senior pastor here at the Pentecostals, and we're thrilled that you're with us uh, this evening. Amen. I don't know where people go to when they're in trouble if they don't have a church. I don't know what people do if, they, if, if church is not a part of their life. And I'm thankful that we have a place to come and be encouraged and be renewed. Lives changed in this house every single weekend, even on a Memorial Day weekend. I'm sorry, Labor Day weekend. Memorial Day too. Yeah, there's, it's, I wake up in a new morning. Amen, every day. Amen. Labor Day weekend, yes, thank you. Labor Day weekend. And uh, we got a lot of folks out traveling, but I'm thankful that you're here with us. And uh, your life can be changed on Labor Day. Amen. It really can. And thankful for what God is already doing in the service. Amen. Brother Glenn, third service here with us today. God just filled him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the very first time here just a few moments ago. Hallelujah. 
We serve a great God. If you have never been baptized in water in Jesus' name, you've never obeyed the gospel, at the conclusion of the service, we're going to give you a chance to do that. All you have to do is, is just die. Jesus died on a cross. You've got to die on an altar. That's why we call this the altar area because it's a place where you sacrifice your will, your plans, and your dreams. You, you need to be baptized in water in Jesus' name. You don't even have to plan for it. Amen. Like the Ethiopian eunuch, whenever he spoke to Philip, he said, there's what, much water here. What doth hinder? Amen. What doth hinder you from being baptized? Listen, there's nothing that stops you from getting baptized. If you want to get baptized, you can be baptized here today. And so, amen. And, uh, of course, receiving the glorious gift of the Holy Ghost, it'll change your life forever. Amen. It is, it's, it's being born again. Jesus rose again on the third day, and whenever we receive his spirit, all things are made new. It's just amazing. How many would testify that the Holy Ghost is the best gift you've ever received? <laughs> Amen. The best. It is so much better. It's what the, the epistle of Hebrews calls a better thing. No matter how good your gifts were, they're not better than the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the very, very best. And I'm so thankful for what God has done. We're glad that you're here with us. If you're new to the Pentecostals, uh, we, we want you to understand you're in a church that uh, is, not, is not centered around one or two individuals, but we are a family church. And, and by that, everybody, we believe, has a ministry. Everybody's got something that they can do for the kingdom of God. You've got an area that you need to be fulfilled. The most miserable person is one that simply focuses all their attention on themselves. And the enemy will do it. You know, I've noticed in 22 years of pastoring, when people become spiritually discouraged or they become overwhelmed in life, the first thing that they quit is not their job, it's not their hobbies, it's not even surfing the internet. The first thing that they are tempted to give up is their ministry. And the enemy knows that. He knows what he's doing because there's power, there's authority in in exercising what God has called you to do. Amen. The Bible says that it's the anointing that that destroys the yoke. The anointing is not just so you can feel good. The anointing is there so that you can do the work of God. And, and so whenever we're involved in the work of God and we're going through a trial, stop everything else, but don't stop what God's called you to do because that's how you're going to many times get through it. And so I encourage you uh, to get involved if you haven't. Get involved in the work of God and don't quit. Look at somebody beside you and tell them, don't quit. Amen. Don't, don't stop. The enemy, that's his goal, is to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Amen. He don't mind you coming to church. He just don't want you to do anything for God. And uh, every one of us have a role in, to play in God's kingdom and building his kingdom. And so tonight we want to celebrate two more people. We do this, try to do this on a regular basis. Uh, is celebrate those who have found uh, their ministry. And we do it by handing out towels. Jesus picked up a towel and began to wash the feet of his disciples. His disciples were bothered by that. And, and uh, even Simon said, Lord, forbid it. I, I, I'm not going to let you do that. And Jesus said that, he said, if, if, you know, if you don't let me wash your feet, you'll have no part of me. And he said, well, Lord, then wash all of me. He just said, <laughs> Simon, he was, he was a character. But he, um, uh, Jesus said, he that is the greatest in the kingdom of God is the servant of all. And so uh, there's no way that we can be a true disciple of Jesus Christ until we put a towel on our arm. Amen. It's part of discipleship. Just like reading your Bible, just like prayer, worship, faithfulness to church, serving in ministry helps you to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's not about the jobs. You look sometimes at a church and say, everything's covered. It's not about that. First of all, not everything's covered, but there's plenty of, of places that, that uh, we could use uh, your ministry. But, but it's, it's not about that. It's about what serving does for you and to you. And so uh, two people that we want to celebrate. The first has been coming to POK for a few months now. And um, uh, at first we weren't sure about him because he took one of our best soul winners and when he married her but he's back in our good graces because he brought her back home amen 
and he is he is very passionate about God's kingdom and uh, serving. He currently serves in for preachers only. He serves in our Spanish ministry, and recently he took over the reins of the Bible study ministry. You heard him just a few moments ago. Tonight we want to celebrate Brother Victor Salinas. <laughs> The next person that we want to celebrate is a sweet lady who's been attending for many, many years now. She is very quiet, but she is very funny at the same time. If you ever talk to her, get to know her. She is a faithful lady with a heart of gold. She has served in many areas of ministry over the years, and for whatever reason, it slipped through the cracks when we celebrate folks that receive towels. Uh, but she is currently serving in our nursery ministry. And tonight, we want to celebrate Sister Diane Waller. All right. Amen. She had to slip out and go to work, so God knows. Amen. All right. Why don't you put your hands together and let's welcome the POK Choir as they come and minister and
hands together, lift up your voice. Magnify the one who's worthy. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. We glorify your name. Amen. I got a feeling this is what heaven, a little bit of what heaven's going to be like, but a whole lot more of it. Amen. How many are thankful? How many, how many are thankful? God manifested in flesh that he would go to a cross and die for us. Amen. You bet he's worthy. Amen. I say you, come on. He is definitely worthy. He's worthy. Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. I normally don't say this. You will normally not hear me say this. But I'm ready to preach and have been all week. I called a couple of friends and I said, you don't normally hear me say this. I said, but I am ready to preach. Now, preach doesn't mean a certain style. It means ready to proclaim the word of the Lord. And I'm ready to proclaim the word of the Lord. Oftentimes I'll speak, but I, it's okay if someone else does. But I, I've been ready all week, anxious to uh, speak. And I want to say that I am thankful and for, for two things, especially tonight, that I get to work with such a wonderful team here at the Pentecostals of Katy. And last weekend, I think it's only the third time in my six or so years of being here that Pastor McKee and I both have been out of town on the same Sunday. And yet, I heard so many wonderful things. Brother Gage, Sunday morning. Brother Marshall speaking Sunday night. I'm thankful for such a wonderful team here at the Pentecostals of Katy. Amen. But those involved in pastoring know that the preaching part of it is about 10%, maybe 15% of what goes on. There's so many things else that takes place behind the scenes. And even this week, our uh, admin pastor, Brother Korea has led our teams, our team leads in meetings this week. And I stepped in on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock, and he had it all together and ran such a great meeting. And a lot of things that take place behind the scenes for the church to function as it does. I am so thankful for such a wonderful team here at the Pentecostals of Katy. Amen. Now, I don't say a whole lot about it from the pulpit here, but I'm also thankful for a wonderful team at Texas Bible College, and I am starting my second year, and it's just a couple of weeks ago, and I get to work alongside my wife and uh, watch her teach and involve herself in what God has called her to do, and then Sister Tikas, which is our program director of counseling, and uh, such a, a joy and an honor to work alongside her, and uh, she tells me what to do behind the scenes. She knows the ins and outs of the college. And then recently to have uh, Brother Pettigo to join the team in uh, April as our uh, Director of Communications and Marketing, uh, what a lot of people call Promotions Director, doing an outstanding job and appreciate him so very much. And uh, between, between the two of them, we keep the office uh, hopping because we all have Nerf guns and we we like to laugh and we're they bring dogs into the building and all kinds of crazy things and then there's the Starbucks runs and uh, I do appreciate them very much. Reading from the book of Ezra chapter three, Ezra chapter three. Here recently, I was reading, felt led to read the book of Ezra, and um, as I began to read, I read the entire book one morning and um, begin to study and look at the scriptures more in depth. And this particular passage we're getting ready to read really stood out to me, Ezra chapter 3 and verse 10. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their peril with trumpets and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. 
And they sang praises by chorus in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord because he is good for his mercy endureth forever towards Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and the Levites, the chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first house, when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the noise was heard afar off. By the, the help of the Lord, I, I want to, to speak on the, this subject tonight, God's master plan. And I know Pastor McKee has just finished a series this morning. If you did not get to hear that, if you were serving or perhaps in an, another part of, of the, uh, the building in the church service, you want to go back and listen to that message, a powerful message. And uh, I, I feel like the Lord has been saying something into our church body, our congregation, and, and uh, he's ending his series uh, this morning, he said, and this may be the end of the other part of the series. Since two weeks ago, I preached the same thing he preached, and this morning, he, he dove into a couple of scriptures. I wanted to turn around and yell out, stay out of that. That's in my nose for tonight. You're not going to leave me anything, And uh, but by the help of the Lord, I want to talk about God's master plan. You may be seated. It's also a joy to serve alongside my, my son. I need to say that often, but I enjoy um, picking on him. He helped me in my message a week ago, and I messed up and told him, or two weeks ago, and um, I said that, uh, he's shaking his head no, like, don't do it again tonight. And uh, we, have, we have a lot of fun. Let me uh, take just a few moments and share with you the, the, the background of the verses that we just read, the context. This is uh, one year after Cyrus, he's the king of Persia that conquered Babylon, and uh, God moved on him to allow uh, a, a fragment of the people of Judah to return to Jerusalem, and this is about 50 years um, after the beginning of their captivity to return to Jerusalem and begin to rebuild the house of the Lord. Uh, Ezra 1 and 3, it records Cyrus' words. It says, who is there among you of all this people? His God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. This took place around 538 B.C., and then there was a second wave of those returning from Babylon to Jerusalem in 458, and then a third return in 444. Interesting, in these three returns, there had been three departures to Babylon, and now there were three returns. The, the first return was led by Zerubbabel and Ezra chapters 1 through 6, they address this return as do the books of Haggai and Zechariah. And then the second return was led by Ezra himself in chapter 7 through 10. And then there is a third and final return that was led by Nehemiah. And in each of these returns from captivity to the, the promised land in Jerusalem, Judah, you will find that there was a special focus uh, the first return, the focus was on rebuilding the temple. Uh, the second return, uh, you find that the focus was on adherence to the Torah, the commandments of the Lord, the people needed reforming. And also, um, there was a, a, a focus on rebuilding of the, t of the city itself. And then the third return, led by Nehemiah, the focus of that particular time period was on rebuilding of the walls. And it's interesting when you look at scripture of these three returns in this time period, you find that each leader uh, faced opposition. Uh, it seemed to be a constant companion. 
There were accusations that were made. There were false charges that were leveled, and it happened time and time again with each of these leaders and each of these returns. And this opposition was designed by uh, the Judah's enemies in trying to discourage them. It was sent to bring discouragement. And the, the hope would be that they would cease rebuilding the temple and cease rebuilding the city and that they would cease rebuilding the walls. According to Revelations 12 and 10, the Bible lets us know that Satan is our accuser. The Bible says that he brings charges of wrong behavior against us before God day and night. Not only is he going before the Lord, but he is also um, constantly tormenting us. He will tell us things like, you can't get back up again. It'll never be the same again. You can't be used by the Lord again. He can't forgive you for all the things that you've done, and you don't deserve to move forward. And so times, some of the things that he says will be somewhat half-truths, like we don't deserve it, uh, that is true, but yet he mingles it in such a way that is as though that, well, we, we, our God can't forgive us, or our God doesn't show mercy, or our God doesn't show his goodness. So he'll mingle half-truths with blatant lies. And his number one objective is to cause us to become discouraged so that we will quit. Now, I, I, I've been on this for a little while, and I can't get away from it. You need to understand that if you are going to do anything for God, be used of God, accomplish God's stuff, see dreams and prophecies spoken upon you come to pass, you are going to have to face some resistance. Amen. You're going to go through some things. It's, it's wrong to think that I am going to follow what God has called me to do and then somehow it's got, there's going to be a red carpet that's going to roll out and I'm going to get in a limo and I'm going to drive off into the sunset and everything's going to be perfect. It doesn't work that way. You're going to go through some things. And, and when we get a hold of this and we begin to understand that my life is not going to be without difficulties, then you begin to understand there are some things that I've got to do in order to get through those difficulties. And one of the things that you need to do to get through those difficulties is to declare the word of the Lord. The, the Bible says that we are not ignorant of, of his devices. We're, we're, not, we're not clueless at how the enemy works. And so if you're going through some things and you're growing a little bit discouraged, then welcome to the club. Because if you're going to do anything for God, you're going to go through some stuff. Amen. If you're going to see your dreams come to fruition, you're going to go through some stuff. Amen. If, you're going to go, if you are going to be what God has called you to be, do what God has called you to do, you are going to go through some stuff, and you're going to make up your mind that, devil, I don't care what you bring my way, I'm not backing down, I'm not quitting, I'm not turning around, I'm not throwing in the towel. you got to develop some resilience. Amen. So you, you, need, to, you need to use the word of the Lord. Jesus, when, when he was facing resistance, he said, it is written. It is written. It is written. You need to declare that nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. It's the word. Declare it. Nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. No tribulation, no distress, no persecution, no famine, no negatives, no pearl, no sword. Amen. We're talking about going through some things. None of that is going to separate me from God. But all of these things, in all these things, I am more than a conqueror. I am persuaded that there's no death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature that can separate me from the love of God. 
Hallelujah. You ought to know that despite of all the junk that you go through in life, despite all the resistance, God loves you and nothing is going to keep him from working his plan in your life. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to make up your mind. I'm not quitting when I face resistance. I'm not quitting because it's taking longer than I thought it was going to take. I'm not quitting because what I was expecting is not happening. I'm going to trust God with my expectations and let God work it all out. Amen. I study and man, I... This old song came to my mind, and I know I, I'm getting old, so I just think of the old songs. The song came to my mind. I feel like traveling on and on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. Well, I feel like traveling on. Pastor knows it. <laughs> You, 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 here, here's what happens. We go through stuff and we don't feel like traveling. We go through stuff and we're ready to walk out. We go through stuff and we're, 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 we're like, what is going on? We're freaking out. We're, well, I don't, I don't know. I thought God, I thought God spoke. I don't know. I, we're looking at our calendar as opposed to looking at the promises. Amen. If you can get a hold of what I'm talking about tonight, when you go through some things, you could be singing, I feel like traveling on and on. My heavenly home is. Come on, Brother Waller. I'm feeling a little crazy right now. I like that. Brother Waller, you just made it to the worship team. Congratulations. I feel like traveling on and on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Come on, brother. Yeah. Come on, brother Oyer. Don't let brother Waller out, do you? I'll just don't laugh, brother Korea. I'll give you the mic. No. I'm kidding. I like what the Apostle Paul declared in 1 Corinthians 1. He says, there was a time where I was uncertain if we were going to live. He said, but God came through, and he said, it turned out to be one of the best things I've ever experienced because I stopped relying on myself, and I started relying on God. Some of you come to your wits end, but you learn at that moment, I can't rely on myself, but I can't rely on God. God comes through, and now I expect God to come through again and again. Come on, anybody in the house tonight that you've been through something that got you down at your wit's end and you didn't know what to do, but you learned to trust him. So, so trouble is just a part of it. Outside resistance is just a part of it. Tough times are just a part of it. Naysayers are just a part of it. Amen. I, I want to help somebody here tonight to get a, a better glimpse at the master plan. Because some of you have been looking at just a portion of it. You, you haven't stepped back to look at the master's plan. If you look at the master's plan, you're going to understand you're going to go through some difficulty. And th this is the struggle that the people were experiencing in rebuilding the temple. They were looking at it with a limited view. They were not looking at the master's plan. The master's plan, according to prophecy, which went before them in the book of Daniel and Jeremiah, said that they would experience 40 or 70 years of bondage. But they were not to be dismayed because God, the master builder, had a master plan that he was working from. And when it was all said and done, God was going to turn it all around. Jeremiah 29 and 10, the Bible says, For thus saith the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back 
to this place, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They're plans for welfare, welfare and not for evil to give you hope and a future. And so, or a future and a hope. And, and when you look at this, and the King James actually uses this word, it says a, a, a hope or an end and a, and a hope, which means a hopeful end. It's talking about the very end that you're going to have hope. God's master plan is not to destroy you. Can someone say yes? yes? It's not to forsake you. God's master plan for his people was not to destroy them or forsake them or abandon them. And neither is it God's plan for you or I to destroy us, to forsake us or abandon us. But when the people started rebuilding the temple, they're laying out the foundation. The Bible says that some of them begin to weep. The question is, well, why? Well, the scripture lets us know that the ones who were weeping were of the, the, the scripture actually says ancient. It's talking about the older generation. These are the people who knew what the temple was like before it was destroyed. They, they knew what it used to be like, and now it wasn't measuring up to what it used to be. It wasn't, it wasn't as perhaps as large or as grand. It was lacking. They're looking at the foundation and they see that there's a difference and they begin to weep. But God had a master plan. And you look at this in Ezra chapter one, verse one, the Bible says, and in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, he issued a decree that would allow the Jews to rebuild the temple. In Ezra three and eight, in the second month of the second year, this is after the second month of the second year that you'll find that the rebuilding of the foundation of the temple started. It's, it's at this time that the following happens in Ezra 3 and 12. But many of the priests, the Levites, the chief of the fathers, who were ancient men that had seen the first house. When the foundation of this house, the present one, was laid before their eyes, they began to weep with a loud voice. This took place around the second month of the second year. During the same time, Haggai 1 and 1 begins with these words, in the second year of King Darius. So this, this is letting us know it's around the same time. And 2 and 1, Haggai says, in the seventh month, on the 21st day of the month. So they're addressing the same period of time between what we read in Ezra and what we read right here in Haggai, there is perhaps five months and 21 days at most between the two accounts. They start building the temple, laying the foundation. The people begin to weep, and the Lord is speaking a word here in Haggai. All of this takes place within five months and 21 days. And this is the word in the book of Haggai, in chapter 2 and verse 3. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? He's speaking to the ancient men. He's speaking to those who saw the, the, the former temple. He says, how do you see it now? Is not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua. He's saying be strong. And again, the third time, all ye people of the land. He says that you are to work, for I am with you. He says, according to the word that I gave you, I covenant with you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit remains among you. Do not be afraid or fear ye not. Then in verse nine, the Lord says, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. Amen. God was trying to get the weepers to understand that what he was doing was way beyond what they were seeing. He was working from a master plan, and God declares in the book of Haggai to the people who are the weepers that, hey, check this out. When I'm all said and done, the glory of this latter house is going to be greater than the one that's been gone for a long time. Could I just stop and say to somebody here that has been weeping over your past mistakes that when God gets done with you, what God is going to do in your life is going to be greater than what God did with you before your mistake. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. We, 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 we look at our lives sometimes and we begin to moan 
and groan over what used to be when God is the master builder and God is looking at it from the end and from the beginning, he looks at the, the very end. He starts it off right, right from the very start. He looks on the future and he says, hey, I see that uh, you're going to make a mistake. Hey, I, I see that you're going to struggle here. And I see that you're going to have some struggles there. So I'm going to work this whole thing from my master plan. And I'm going to put this in place and that in place. And I'm going to bring you here this service tonight so you can hear this message to help you move another step forward into the future that I've got planned for you. Because when I get all done with all of this, the people, they, they were discouraged. The temple they were building was inferior to the one that the Babylonians had destroyed. And, and God promised that the glory of the present house was going to be greater. It wasn't that the second temple was going to be bigger or nicer or more beautiful. But the presence of Christ was going to enter into the second temple. God was working things from his master plan. The elders, they were, they were getting words up over the size of the foundation in comparison to what it used to be. But God was saying, you don't see it right now, but my master plan is that one day I'm going to manifest myself in flesh and I'm going to walk through the doors of this temple. But that isn't all because this temple is a prototype. My temple won't always be this building. My temple is going to be the hearts and lives of people. I'm working on a master plan. I'm viewing things from a master plan. I know what I'm doing. what the scripture tells us in Revelations 13 and 8. Jesus Christ is the lamb that is slain from the foundation of the earth. Jesus Christ is the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Before God created man, God looked into the future and he saw that man would need redemption. So God placed it into his master plan. I'm going to manifest myself in flesh and become a sacrifice for all of mankind. I will become the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. That the trouble that Jesus encountered, the resistance that he faced, the rejection, the crown of thorns, the, the, the stripes from the whips, the cross, it, it didn't catch him by surprise. It was just part of his master plan. In 1 Corinthians 1, and our, our, our 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, which is talking about his plan, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew, for if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Did you get this? He's working things from his master plan, but the devil, he don't know the master plan. He doesn't know it, but he's getting used. He's getting used. If he would have understood what was going on, he he would have done everything he could to stop Jesus from being crucified. He thought he was winning when they nailed Jesus to the cross, but he was only secure in his own defeat. Likewise, the devil, he doesn't get it, but the stuff that you are encountering, he thinks it's going to defeat you, it's going to destroy you, it's going to cause you to quit, but God says, I'll take all that stuff that you're going through, I'll use it to shape you, refine you, and then propel you towards the future that I planned for you a long time ago. This is just all part of my master plan. That's why God... Let's us know that all the trouble, all the difficulty, all the junk that we go through, it's all for our glory. Scripture says God's master plan is to use the stuff that you go through. Amen. Use the stuff that you go through so that you can get to where God wants you to go. This, look at what, what Romans, Paul writes this in Romans chapter 8 and verse 17. He says, and if children, then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so, be that we suffer with him, that we may also be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Paul is saying that all the difficulties, all the trouble, all the sufferings, all the hard times, it's all good because it's all part of God's master plan. The devil, he doesn't get it. 
He tries to mess with us to get us to quit, but if we'll stay with it, every time that he messes with us, God is saying, hey, I'm going to make sure that you win. I'm going to make sure you come out on the other side a winner. I'm going to turn it around. No, 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 notice this, notice this. Luke chapter 14, and I'm almost done. Luke chapter 14, verse 27, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Oh, I thought I was going to come to him and I was gonna be wealthy. No, that's just what pop Christianity says. Oh, I thought I was going to be blessed. You're stepping into your new destiny. Your next step is into the place of God's work. Promise you're going to be blessed like never before. Great blessings in 2022 are going to be poured out upon you. You're going to have great wealth. You're going to have great prosperity. Buy my book for $15.99. We, 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 we got this wrong idea that somehow that in my living for God, that everything is going to be great. But the scripture just, we just read said, if you're going to be my disciple, you got to get a cross. You got to pick up your cross. And look, look at the next, next verse, verse 28. For which of you intending to build a tower set if not down first and count the cost? I, I, now, how, how many here are in construction or have worked in construction at some point in your life? Would you, would you raise your hand? Anybody ever, like, been the head? Anybody, like, on a job, you were the plumber. You were the, you were the main guy. Electrician. Yeah, we got Brother Mario back here. He's an he's electrician. Now, here, here's the deal. He cannot count the cost because... He's just got a limited view of the master plan. He looks at it from the viewpoint of electrician. Any painters in the house? It's a painter. Painter can look at square footage. Painter over there, look at the square footage and give a price. Based on the square foot, I'll charge this amount of money to paint the building. But they can't give you the cost of building the building because they have a limited view of the plan. They're just painting. The master builder sees all of the plans. He sees all of the prints from the very beginning to the completion of it. That is the only way you can totally count the cost. I know this is simple. I know this is very, very simple. But the only way you can know the total cost is to be able to see all the plans. The, the, the master builder, he, he is the one who is the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. He sees the master plan. You and I, we struggle with that. So the scripture which of you intending to build a tower set not down first and count the cost? Now, there are two ways of viewing this scripture. One would be that you could view this scripture from the standpoint that this is the Lord speaking, and he is saying that you've got to pick up your cross and follow me because I am building a church. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Or king gonna make war. The two word pictures here: a builder and someone going to war. So you can look at it from one standpoint that I am building something. I need to make sure that you're gonna stick with me. Are you gonna embrace the cross? Are you gonna embrace the cross? You gonna pick up your cross and follow? Okay, then I want you on my team because I'm building something. You gonna embrace the cross? 
Your cross? Okay, good, because I'm getting ready to wage war on the enemy. I can count on you. You gonna embrace the cross? Yeah. You ready to embrace the cross? Come on. Need you on the team. Jesus is speaking in disciples. He says, hey, if you're going to be my disciple, if you're going to follow me, then you've got to bear your cross. The other way you can look at it is that if you're really going to bear a cross, you're going to be a part of the team, then you've got to count the cost. Because you don't go to war without counting the cost and make sure that you've got enough soldiers you don't go into building something without counting the cost and make sure that you got enough money to be able to build the building. Two ways of looking at the scripture. My question to you here tonight, very simple. The Bible says that if we're going to be his disciples, we have to pick up our cross. And some of you are going like, duh. Yeah, so I have a question for you who just went like, duh, in your spirit. Why is it that you moan and groan and complain and weep over the junk that you've gone through? Why, why, why is it that, that you struggle so deeply sometimes with the timing? Why do you beat yourself up over past mistakes and you can't move forward? Did you not say that you would pick up your cross? Did you not say that I'll... I'll bear it. Huh. Yeah, I, 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 Cade, get out here. Come help me. It's taking him forever. I saw him get up a while ago, but he hasn't made it out here yet. Thank you, son. Man, I'm telling you what. Call Cade, but he'll come running for supper. But other than that, I need to stop. <laughs> the word of the Lord, too, in Haggai was yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel. Be strong, O Joshua. Be strong, all ye people in the land, and work, for I am with you. Very simple tonight, but if God has a master plan for all humanity, and God has a master plan for a nation, then you can count on it. God's got a master plan for you. Every mistake that you make, he had a master plan. <laughs> Every failure that you've had, he's had a master plan. Every time you've been down, he's had a master plan. Every time you've wept, he's had a master plan. Every time you looked at it, you said, God, is just not what I thought it was going to be. He's had a master plan. God is working. God is molding. God is shaping. God is moving things. If you'll just be strong. If you'll just be strong. If you'll just be strong and work. Just keep doing what you know to do. Keep moving forward. Keep trusting him. When it's all said and done, when God gets done, 
work in his master plan. It's all for our glory. That's what the scripture said. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray for people in this place here tonight. God, that thought it was going to be easier than it's been. Been a little bit more difficult. They've encountered a little bit more than they thought they were going to encounter. Gone through a little bit more than what they thought. God, it's been a little longer than what they thought it was going to be. They thought it was going to be a little quicker. The fulfillment of the promise, the dreams. God, it's been a little bit more challenging. God, some of them have been at it for a long time. God, some of them have been holding on to your word. Holding on to your word. Holding on to your word. And God, you sent me to remind them tonight just to be strong. To be strong. To be strong. And to work. God, because you're working a master plan. In the name of Jesus. It won't be everybody. I know it won't be everybody. It's okay. But those of you that the Holy Ghost has been speaking to you, I want you to step out right now from where you're at and make your way to this altar. And I want you to be encouraged tonight. I want you to be encouraged tonight. I want you to lift up your hands and lift up your voice. And I want you to give God glory and honor and praise. Hallelujah. The weeping, the weeping, the weeping will be turned to shouts of joy knowing that God has already completed it. It's already done. The master plan says it's all done. You're victorious. You're on the other side of it. I know you're not there right now, but you, but you are in the plan. You're on the other side of the challenge. You're on the other side of the trial. You're on the other side of the difficulty. God, open the eyes of our understanding. We see the greatness of your power. In the name of Jesus.
books of the minor prophets such as Brother Wilson has preached from tonight describe a unique time in Israel's history. They've spent years and years in Babylonian captivity and God is now bringing them out. Daniel prophesied that he would, the Lord would eventually bring them out. He does. And he brings them back to Israel and they're restoring Israel. They're building up Israel. But God wanted to do more than just restore their houses, their homes, and their land, the pragmatic things of their life. But the most significant restoration came when God restored the temple, restored their means of worship to the Lord. And I just, I just feel to tell somebody that Brother Wilson was in the will of God tonight preaching this message because somebody feels as though the only restoration God's going to give you is a home, a job, but God's got more than that. He wants to restore you spiritually. He wants to restore your anointing, your walk with God, your ministry, all the spiritual things that the enemy has, has taken out of your life, you feel are gone forever. They're not gone forever. God's going to restore them. And like he said, the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the former and, and and God's going to do something greater for you in this season of your life amen it's not all downhill God doesn't have a secondary plan he has a master plan and, and God's going to do great things but we just got to trust him in these moments and let God restore amen don't be satisfied we got to maintain our hunger amen stir up that hunger what where's your hunger for God you still have it? Amen. Are you still hungry for the deep things of the Lord? Stir it up again. Uh, amen. The kind, of, the kind of passion for God that we need is the kind of passion that Nehemiah demonstrated when he heard the reports of the desolation of Israel and he wept in a foreign land and said, this is not right. I, we've got to do better. We can do better. That's the kind of passion that needs to stir up within us, that we realize things can be better. And I can't just go through life and pretend as though everything is what it's always been. Things can be better. And I can't rest until I see the promises of God fulfilled in my life. Amen. If you're here tonight, you've never been baptized in water in the name of Jesus. This is your chance. We have son to be baptized here in just a few moments. And I thank, I thank God for that. But if you've never been baptized, you ought to take advantage of this moment. Considering how important water baptism is, that it saves us according to the Gospel of Mark, it, baptism saves us. Considering how important it is, what, what else could you do that would be more important than being baptized in Jesus' name? What would keep you from getting baptized tonight? It would literally, it'll literally have an eternal impact in your life amen you're gonna everything else you'll do this week you're, you'll probably forget about it next week but as I said this morning 10,000 years from today you'll still be looking back at the 15 minutes you took to get baptized in Jesus name and you'll be thankful because it's lasting for all eternity amen so if you've never been baptized in water in Jesus name all you got to do is come over here to the side one of our ministers will take you and show you uh, how, how to go back and, and uh, get ready for baptism. You can be baptized in the beautiful, saving name of Jesus Christ tonight. Amen. If you've never received the Holy Ghost, this is your chance. This is your opportunity. Amen. God wants to fill you with His Spirit here this evening. Amen. God is so good. I'm thankful for the blessings of the Lord. I wonder if one more time we could just lift our hands to God and let's thank Him for all that He's done. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Jesus, for your blessings. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you have promised restoration. God, not only we restore the natural things, but you restore spiritual things in our life. We thank you, Lord, that you're a restoring God. We love you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I feel good today. I know it's a Labor Day weekend, but it just feels good in the Holy Ghost. I thank God for everything that's happened thus far. 
Amen. Someone mentioned earlier today, I think it was Brother Warrior, that we were down from our normal attendance, but when we look at last Labor Day, we're still quite a bit higher than last year, uh, Labor Day weekend, and so I'm thankful for that. Amen. And uh, God has been good. God has been good. Amen. So thankful for the blessings of the Lord. Thankful for God's goodness. Amen. Take, take a few moments. We're going to baptize some folks here in a minute. So if you could, just uh, feel free to step around and greet one another in Jesus' name. But for all practical purposes, you're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. God bless you. Let's go change our world. Amen. Darkness. 